Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is yet again one of the very mysterious stars that was recently described and explained by science. Today we're going to be talking about the system known as NGTS-7 and what the scientists discovered here for the first time ever. Let's talk about this and welcome to the math. First of all, what you're looking at is a very interesting binary system. Well, actually, this is not the binary system itself. This right here is a brown dwarf that you can see in front of me that orbits an M-type star, also known as a red dwarf. These stars are the most common stars in our solar system, with the nearest one being Proxima Centauri. If I were to zoom out here, you'll see that these two objects orbit next to each other, relatively close to each other. and they do so in a very unusual manner. But let's not rush into things, and let me first explain to you why this system is so unusual. So first of all, this is actually kind of far away. It's roughly around 400 light years away from us, and when the scientists were just looking at the system from a distance, because these are um, red dwarfs, and are not generally really bright, what they were seeing was essentially something like this. It was a single star. But some scientists decided to zoom in a little bit and they realized that there was a binary star system here with a very large brown dwarf orbiting around one of the stars. In other words, it looked something like this. We have the main star, NGTSA, orbited by a relatively large um, brown dwarf with a mass of roughly around 62 to possibly even more masses of Jupiter. Then we have the partner star, and the partner star, known as NGTS-B, orbits at a distance. And altogether this creates a very interesting and very unusual phenomenon. And this is kind of what the scientists were confused about. And this is actually why they decided to zoom into the star to begin with. It's because it was blinking at them in a very predictable pattern every 16.2 hours. This is how they discovered the brown dwarf. But the mystery did not stop there. The mystery was actually in seeing other unusual blinking patterns every 16.2 hours as well. In other words, something else was also causing the star to lose luminosity a little bit. And they suspected that this something may have been the beautiful spots that you see on the surface of the star, these so-called sunspots. These are of course uh, formed by the incredibly strong magnetic field on the surface of the star. But to have such strong magnetic fields, to have such strong magnetic lines, this star has to be spinning really fast. And that's when they started to realize something incredible was happening here. And what was happening here was that both the star and the brown dwarf were tidally locked to each other. They were literally always facing each other, and this is something that we've never seen before. That's because this brown dwarf is massive enough to have accelerated the rotation or the spin of the star. It made it spin faster over time, and what's even more interesting is that because of that other object, the far away but lonely object known as NGTSB, it's slowly causing the brown dwarf to fall into the main star thus accelerating its rotation even more. So in other words, what's really happening here is uh, described by a so-called Kozai phenomenon or Kozai mechanism. You can check out more about it above my head. But in short, that other star is causing the brown dwarf to slowly make its way closer and closer to the star. And obviously it's going to lose a lot of mass in the process, as it's already doing. But here, every time it moves closer, and closer, it's going to accelerate the rotation of the star itself, and this in effect will give it even more magnetic field. It will become even more magnetic, flare up even more than it's already doing, and eventually will become one of the most magnetically active M-type stars in the galaxy. In other words, eventually this effect may cause the star to spin so fast that it will either fall apart, or become a ridiculously powerful source of really, really powerful flares. And today we believe that um, in about 10 million years, this planet, this brown dwarf, will probably um, eventually come so close to the star that it will either fall apart or get swallowed completely, 
but as it does so, the whole system will be spinning ridiculously fast. Let's try to simulate this here, and let's see what happens if the planet comes really close to this object. So this discovery suggests to us that there are planets out there that are massive enough to influence the behavior of a star, to influence its rotation, and most importantly to cause it to be more active than other stars. This star's activity is actually influenced by the very, very massive brown dwarf next to it. And we've obviously never seen anything like it, we couldn't even imagine this happening, and most importantly, we now believe that um, other stars out there may have been influenced by their own planets, and if they have a very fast rotation, maybe this is actually what happened in those systems. Now, our star, the Sun, is a very slow rotator. And so maybe, just maybe, the explanation for why it spins so slow compared to other stars is because of something similar. Maybe there was a brown dwarf that actually slowed it down instead of accelerating it. Now, that's just a speculation right now, but you never know. Now that we've seen that it's possible, we know that it could happen in other systems. And because this star system is actually kind of young, it's only about 50 million years old, so it's technically um, a star baby, or two babies, we know that eventually it will uh, evolve even more, and okay, here we go, and maybe even this will occur as well. Maybe the star will fall apart completely because it's going to be spinning so fast, with the partner right here possibly getting kicked out of the system, or possibly absorbing a lot of this matter and creating its own miniature star system. So we don't really know what's going to happen to this object in the next 10 million years, but what we do know right now as a fact is that it seems that some planets are so massive that they can influence the behavior of stars that they orbit. And being able to tidally lock a star to yourself is actually a very interesting achievement. And because this is the first time scientists have discovered something like this, it means that now we can potentially explain some of the unusual observations out there in the universe by using this specific mechanism. Now, it's very likely that we might not be around anymore to see what really happens to the star at the end, but we might see some other similar stars where this process has already happened, and so we might be able to discover something in the next few years that will help us explain how all of this evolves over time. But until then, that's really it. This unusual system, an unusual star, and its unusual brown dwarf are definitely something that scientists didn't expect to find. But we have, and now we've explained it in the paper that you can find in the description below. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And space out, and as always, bye-bye.